welcome back modelers. So I am finally done with the Tamiya F4B. Sorry it's taken so long over Christmas. Uh, there's a few bit of distractions, some new kits that I got that I just had to start working on, which will be a couple of the videos that I'm gonna be releasing real shortly, just showing you some of the cool stuff that I built over the vacation. Um, but it's done. Plus, for whatever reason, with modern aircraft, the fiddly bits in the end, um, they're not really my favorite part, and I have to have a little more motivation to get there, versus building the airframe and the cockpit and seeing them all to come together and everything. I don't know, it feels like I'm accessorizing. I don't know. Um, just not exactly one of my things. So here she is, and I'm gonna go over a few things. So it might be a repeat to some of the videos in the earlier sections, but I want this to work as kind of a full video review. So if this is the only video you watch, then you can kind of get a grasp of my thoughts about the kit. Um, overall, easily the best kit of the year, hands down. Um, so many different parts of this that I was building was just a joy. And I'm like, oh my goodness, they thought this through like so deeply that I'm like, wow. Um, there's a few little things that I'm like, really? An ejector pin there? I mean, it's devoid of pins everywhere, but then here, I don't know. Maybe I was just spoiled with the rest of the build. But overall, a joy. The biggest problem that I had with this thing is getting into the tail vertical stabilizer decals. So uh, if you're following along with some of the other videos, I used the kit decal on that and it started out great, but then it chipped and flaked and started coming off and the touch-ups just didn't really fit proper. And so I said, I'm gonna try to paint this on my silhouette, which um, making the mask on there were not too challenging, uh, but it just didn't come out right. I don't know, the lines didn't look just how I wanted. All sorts of different problems with it. And so in the end, I'm like, mm, let's go back to a decal. We know a decal will work as long as I get something good. So I went to, I think, just a micro scale, just a kind of older decal for it. Because I think I only pay like five bucks or something. So it was pretty cheap as a backup. But um, that started to work out pretty well. There's a few things with it that were a little bit weird. Um, there's... In some areas, it's hard to tell, but there's multiple layers just to make sure there's coverage. And so there's some weird things with that decal that I didn't like as much as the Tamiya, but at least it was thinner. And so that worked out pretty well for the vertical stabilizer. And to a point where I'm like, yeah, let's move on. <laughs> I'm done with that. But I spent more on that stabilizer than like a lot of the, man the building of the actual airframe. It's kind of crazy. So some of the other things that we worked on uh, since last video, and you got a little bit of it on the last video, is just kind of these small little streaks that we got going on. And yeah, of course, uh, the problem that I had with the last video used satin, not a flat, and it just didn't want to stick. But as soon as I put on a matte coat, the weathering pencils worked out pretty well for that. Um, and to be honest, the weathering pencils versus the oil, they're pretty similar in quality from this that I don't remember which is which. So that worked out pretty well. So I don't know, it might be 70% of these are oil and then 20% or four, that doesn't make, <laughs> 60, 40 is probably the ratio on uh, the chips that I did for the little, little small streaks. When we get into like the flaps and ailerons, flapperons, I think on this guy, um, they are going to be 100% oil, as you can kind of tell for with those streaks. So that worked out pretty well. I like those. And then moving on to her belly. So this is where got some pretty cool reviews from people online that like this and want to know a little bit more on how I got into the fuel tanks and how I got them to look so cool. So with it, it wasn't anything super complex, to be honest. It was just a lot of oil and taking a brush like this mop and just moving it around to a point where I liked it. 
But the additional thing that's kind of maybe the Cameron spin on it that I like is after it's just about cured, I set it down as it would on its feet. And then I just kind of drench it in mineral spirits and let it just kind of collect. And the mineral spirits, as it runs down off the sides, it's going to then kind of pool in the bottom and it kind of creates a cool little look. Um, did that for my B47 and it turned out pretty cool. So I like that. And so I did that on the fuel tanks to make sure that they get that kind of effect. Same thing on the top with the mopping effect and a few little streaks, but more of the brown that I put in there because I wanted it to be close to where it was filled in, but there's that. Uh, some of the oils on here, I'm gonna actually have to touch up. You can probably notice, but there's a little bit of fingerprints that's a little bit noticeable. I didn't notice it on camera, but I can sure notice it on this camera and with these lights. So I said I'm done, but technically you gotta do a little bit more. So beyond there, uh, other brushes. This is a cheap one, just from kind of the craft area. <laughs> if it's like grass or something, I don't know. It's really cheap, but it's really stiff and works good for stippling. And then this that worked well for fine stippling and a little bit of kind of just dragging effects on it. So we got through it there. So not anything super special, but if we need to, I can do a, another video showing some of my other tricks with oils. I'm going to be doing some derelict fighters this year, and that's going to have a lot of oil on it. There's probably going to be more paint than, act, sorry, more oil than paint on that bugger. So there's that. Beyond there, I got into the Eduard wheels, and I like them quite a bit for their detail. However, um, putting them on was a little bit weird. They're for this particular kit, but the uh, mounting for the struts is kind of like a cone. And then with the wheel, it's kind of like a square. So you're putting a round peg in a square hole kind of thing to match it up and it doesn't match up right. It's, it's super weird. It's like they just took the Academy one or something and then said, oh yeah, this also works for Tamiya. Or maybe where I bought it from, they mixed it up. I don't know. If you guys have ran into that, let me know. But otherwise, it worked out good in the end. You can see some of the detail that you have with like the lettering on it that loves to catch some of the uh, pigments and oil that I put on the wheels to let it stand out. And so that worked out really well. Okay, beyond there, I wanted to make sure I had a little bit of a different spin than some of the others. So I put on the caps on uh, these, uh, what are they, spots? AIM 9s, I believe. And we removed before flight. Uh, Darren Cook had um, those on at Nationals, and I thought that was a really cool touch. So I want to do that with that. But overall, uh, nothing else to really complain or boast about when it comes to the rest of the build. Everything else was in the previous videos. Uh, if you wanted to look at some of the techniques that I have on the horizontal-ish, I guess, not quite a complete horizontal, but the stabilizers elevator here, um, and some of the techniques that I have to have that kind of burnt effect and everything with there, a few things that I did with that. But uh, let me know in the comments if there's anything particular that you want me to do more of an instructional video to show you. But like I said, um, when we get into the derelict fighters later on in this year, there's gonna be a lot of weathering because we're gonna, I think I'm gonna do probably a MiG-21 for the subject. And it's going to be like a museum subject, kind of like the B-47 that I built. And it's going to be something that has been sitting there for decades. So it's going to have a lot of weathering to it. So we'll be going over that later. But make sure that you like and subscribe. And like I said, put in the comments what you want me to do for some tutorials specific to this build. But until next time.